All right, our speaker today is our very own Reverend Jan. And uh, Jan's going to lay some wisdom on us, some wisdom on us um, titled A Matter of Balance. So, Jan, unmute yourself and go ahead. Good morning. Boy, I love the synchronicity of everything. I almost included Don Miguel Ruiz in my talk this morning, but something else uh, took precedence. So thank you so much, Janet. We're working together on this. Uh, Reverend Brian asked me to talk on discovering nature. And as I went through my senses, of nature and spirituality, I have to be very honest, I was like overwhelmed with so much stuff that I wasn't quite sure where to start. So I trust and know that that which I have to say to you today uh, is what needs to be said. And it goes with you and enriches you. I think we've all heard the story of the Buddha in his search from being a wealthy young man to being a spiritual being. He turned away from eating and taking care of himself for the intention of doing only one thing, learning spiritually who he was and the truth of life. And there's the story of him sitting under the Bodhi tree during this search for enlightenment. And he was distracted by two musicians who were arguing over how to tune a stringed instrument. And one kept saying, not too tight. If you, you'll break the strings. And he couldn't hear what the other one said, so he dragged himself over so he could hear better what the musicians were saying. And the other one said, yes, but not too loose. If it's too loose, the string just buzzes. In the middle is just right. And Buddha heard that wisdom and declared, that's it. That's the key. Perfect balance, not too tight, not too loose, not too high, not too low, not too in, not too out. The middle path is the way. And an entire spiritual teaching evolved around this concept of the middle path. And millions of lives have been, probably billions now, have been impacted and affected by it. And I have selected three different illustrations today to illustrate balance. This philosophical story from the life of the Buddha, a hands-on example, and a scientific report on a scientific experiment, because I'm keeping this talk in balance, you have to know. I have here, and I'm hoping you can see it, I might have to lift it up, a jar of rocks. Now, from what you could see, you probably would agree with me that that jar of rocks is full. I'm not going to try and keep holding it up while I'm doing this, but uh, I trust you can see. So maybe we can agree, yes, that this is full. Okay. I hope the sound of this isn't too unpleasant. Okay, one more time. Would you agree with me that the jar is now full? Okay, one more. Let's try some sand over the rocks and the pebbles. Same size jar, same number of rocks, same number of pebbles, but voila. Once again, our jar is full. 
Oh, I'm sorry. Can you see it from there? So what does all this have to do with living a life of balance? The rocks represent the important things in our lives, the things that nourish us spiritually, the things that nourish us, keep us in balance physically and emotionally. Our spiritual beliefs, our loving, closest loving relationships, our close friends, our spiritual practices. These are the things that keep us centered and emotionally well. And those are the rocks that were in the jar. Now the pebbles are the other things, smaller, still matter, but on a smaller scale. Our jobs, our houses, our cars, the things that we enjoy in life that are important, but they're not the foundation. And then the sand, the sand is everything else. The sand really is the small stuff. So notice the necessity for balance in filling this vase. If we'd filled it with the sand first, there'd be no room for the pebbles or the rocks. It would have been all the small stuff. If we had filled it with the pebbles first, there would have been room for the sand, but no room for the rocks. And the same goes on in our lives. If we spend all our energy and time on material things, the smaller stuff, we don't have room for the important things. Now, by putting the rocks in first, we keep the arrangement in balance. The rocks become the foundation on which we build a full, rich life. But however, if we only put in rocks, there'd be spaces in our lives which keep us out of balance. If we limit ourselves to spiritual and family relationships, we become out of balance with our community. And we don't allow, allow enough time for self-expression and play. So in order for this to represent our lives, it has to be rocks first, then the pebbles, then the sand. You know, many of us lose our balance. All our energy is directed towards our employment, our work life. For the workaholic, there's never enough time for family, for church, or for play. Our spiritual practices are shortchanged in favor of the job. And there are those who spend all their time either socializing or keeping busy without, without regard for either physical or spiritual well-being. The third example I would like to offer you. In the 1980s, an immense experiment was conducted in the Arizona desert and it was called Biosphere 2. Now there were a number of reasons for this experiment. It was both scientific and philosophical, but I'm going to take put my attention on the scientific aspect. The intent of Biosphere 2 was to create the perfect living environment for human beings, plants, and animal life. And so scientists constructed a huge glass dome. It was more than a dome. I went and looked it up and read extensively on it, and it was quite a large complex of passageways and the dome and other areas. But it had, they'd created this artificially controlled environment with purified air and water, filtered light, etc. And it offered the perfect growing condition for plants, fruits, vegetables, animals, and humans. And people lived in the biosphere too for months at a time and everything appeared to do pretty much what the scientists had expected, with one exception. When the trees that were planted grew 
to a certain height, they simply toppled over. The scientists were baffled until they realized they had omitted one natural element that had, should have been essential, and that is wind. Trees need wind to blow against them. It causes the root system to grow deep into the soil, and that root system then supports the tree as it grows taller. Now, there was a valuable lesson in the Biosphere 2 experiment. How many of us have yearned for a perfect growing environment with no disruption from outside, no problems, everything going smoothly, tiptoeing through the tulips, and life, no contention, no stress. But the truth is, what is do we grow with this kind of environment? We strive to avoid contention and stress. And when the challenges of everyday life push against us, they become unavoidable. And the normal tendency is to curse them, to complain, to rail against what it is that is getting in the way of our smooth, happy life. If the trees could talk, would we hear them curse the wind each time they encountered a storm? I don't think so. I believe they'd be thanking the wind for encouraging them to deepen their root system, allowing them to grow stronger and taller. Now, if we're open to this lesson, we can learn a lot from the nature of trees. Watching how they bend and sway gracefully when the wind blows against them. They don't stand rigid, resisting the flow of energy. They don't push back. They accept the strong wind as a blessing that helps them grow. And like the trees, we too need the contrast of the winds of life pushing against us. In those times, we need to remember that God is the soil. The divine is the soil in which we're planted. The essential foundation on which we grow our lives. And it's into this God soil that we place our roots allowing them to go deeply into that divine foundation to give us balance. Learning how to bend and sway and grow with the challenges. Learning how to recognize the blessings in what often doesn't look very much like a blessing right now. So, Challenged and tested, we come alive. Like the trees, we grow. The physical demands cause us to grow stronger. Mental and emotional challenges produce wisdom and resiliency. Spiritual, twist, uh, spiritual testing produces strength, strength of character and faith. In his book, Can We Talk to God? Dr. Ernest Holmes said, we would defeat the very purpose of life should we live in a continuous state of meditation or prayer, oblivious to the objective world. Any attempt to isolate oneself from the world of action is contrary to the order of the universe, therefore futile. How do we determine if we're out of balance? And if we are, how can we change it? We can identify burnout in the physical body, in the emotional body, and in the body of our affairs. We, when we expend excessive energy in any one area, we become unproductive and out of balance. Now the Buddha himself ignored the well-being of his physical body while trying to free his mind. And that resulted in extreme imbalance. 
Life is simply energy and it flows in the direction we choose. Based on our priorities, if energy is directed too intently in one area or spread in too many directions, we create an imbalanced life. Illness, emotional instability and exhaustion are all indications of imbalance. Frequently we know intuitively, we know when we're directing our energy and creating a lack of balance. But how do we regain our balance? My favorite personal mantra is, be still and know that I am God. And in this statement, I acknowledge I am one with God, that I'm part of the unity of all life and that there is only one. And this statement returns me to center. And it gives me the opportunity to bring my thinking into alignment. And when I get my own attention, I can make the decision to focus on staying centered. And I stay in that place until I get a clear picture of how I am misdirecting my energy, the price I'm paying for it, because there is a price and a prize. And then I can choose to free myself up and make different choices. You know, if you haven't done so already, give yourself the joy of meditation. Make time each day to sit in the silence, just you and your breath, staying centered in doing nothing but breathing. And you'll discover when you release attachment to outcomes, the peace and the serenity steals in. Get out in nature, walk in the beach or in the hills. Go to a park where you can watch ducks or other floating creatures. Watch how the water supports them. And remember, you are constantly supported in the same way by the power of spirit. Feel the warmth of the sun. Smell the smells of the earth or the ocean. Ask a unity prayer chaplain to do affirmative prayer with you. Explore the middle way. Perfect balance means not too much, not too little. Living a balanced life helps to avoid burnout in any specific area. And it helps produce a life of wholeness and deep inner peace. So I ask you this week to consider these six areas of your life as strings on an instrument your spirituality, your physical health, your emotional health, your relationships, your prosperity and your job satisfaction, and your self-expression and socializing. Invest time, give yourself the blessing of investing time in exploring which of these strings needs to be tightened and which one needs to be loosened. Begin now to commit to fine tuning your instrument. Seek that middle way and notice your life begin to come together in harmony with the one. I had a very personal aha moment some years ago that helped me bring my life back into better, into greater balance. I have to admit, I was very, I was pretty depressed, feeling pretty hopeless or that was life really worth living. And I went down to the beach at Oceano. I went to watch the sunset. And as I was standing there watching the sun, it was behind these little clouds that don't really obliterate it, but they diffuse the light. But I'm very clearly seeing the sun gently appear to drop. And suddenly 
I had a shift, a, a, a feeling of something turning over. And instead of the sun slipping behind the horizon, the earth was moving up, obliterating the sun. And that for me was the truth. Did I come to see a sun set or did I come to see an earth rise? Because the truth is, the sun isn't going anywhere. We're the ones that are moving. We're the ones that change the scenery, change the horizon, appearance of the horizon. And it's in our perspective, whether it's a sunset with depression and sadness or an earth rise with new hope, with recognizing, I can do this. This is a new opportunity for me to look at my life differently. You know, you are more powerful than you'll ever know. You are the beloved of the Most High, and you deserve that kingdom. It's all a matter of balance. Namaste.